Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Sorry for taking so long to upload this video. I ordered a microphone after my last video since the sound quality was pretty bad, but it only got delivered a few days ago. Uh, so in this video, I would like to go over my Japanese studying suggestions as well as what I've used to study Japanese up to this point. Now my journey began in grad school at FSU, uh, starting with basic Japanese and pretty much taking as many Japanese courses as I could in the two years before I graduated. Then after graduating with a master's in Asian studies, I promptly applied to the JET program, uh, was accepted, and moved to Japan to start teaching English. Now I'm sure some people can do self-studying right from the start, but for me, having the structure of an actual class, as well as a native Japanese speaker teaching me was really invaluable. I believe that once you get the basics down, such as the three writing systems, uh, hiragana, katakana, and kanji, the sentence structure, and some basic grammar, then you have really the foundation to work from to start doing some self-studying and to incorporate some other resources into your studies. Once I graduated and moved to Japan, I think that's really where my most valuable studying and learning actually came in. Now, while I certainly learned a lot in my classes at FSU, uh, I was really in for a shock when I first got to Japan. Now, I thought I was ready to put my studies into practice in daily life, but after I made my first trip to a convenience store, um, I realized just how unprepared I was. I remember going up to the counter to buy something, um, but as soon as the cashier said something, I just was like a deer in the headlights. Uh, now I know that he wanted to know if I wanted a bag. Um, but at the time, I just remember thinking to myself, what on earth is he saying? And how has my two years of studying not prepared me for such a simple encounter? Uh, eventually, he just grabbed a bag and pointed to it, and I understood what he was asking me. But I just remember feeling just so embarrassed as I walked out. Uh, and this is where my second piece of advice comes in. It seems that a lot of Japanese classes focus too much on textbook Japanese, but never prepare you for real life Japanese. So you'll be a pro at must and dust forms by the end of your studies, but the second someone throws in casual Japanese or super formal Japanese in a conversation, it's like you're a beginner again. So try to find some resources for learning everyday Japanese. Uh, personally, I think the best resource for this is YouTube. Uh, I found plenty of YouTubers who focus on this, and I will link to some of them in the description. So while I was in Japan, I had quite a variety of resources for learning Japanese. Obviously, just going through daily life uh, allowed me to improve my Japanese quite a bit. Uh, I had quite a rural placement, so aside from talking to my fellow Jets, I didn't really have that many opportunities to speak English. And that's actually one of the reasons that I applied to the Jet program in the first place. I knew the best and most effective way to learn Japanese would be to actually live in Japan. So applying to something like the JET program was really the easiest way to get there in my opinion. So on top of daily interactions, I managed to find two Japanese teachers. One of them was recommended to me by a friend. And actually I wouldn't really say she was a teacher, more like an older lady who wanted some company. So helping foreigners with their Japanese was a good way to get that. So I'd go to her house once a week, and mainly I would just go through the uh, Japanese language proficiency tests uh, study books and just have her help me with anything I didn't understand. Uh, the other lady was one of a few women who worked with City Hall, I believe, and she taught Japanese in a classroom setting. So um, I would also go there about once a week, and there would be a class of about seven or eight people, and we would just go through some worksheets that she provided us. Now, if you don't have the luxury of living in Japan or uh, finding a native Japanese speaker to help you, I would highly suggest a group called Ohanashi Kagawa. Uh, they meet online every weekend and they facilitate one-on-one -on -one conversations between people wanting to improve their Japanese and those wanting to improve their English. And there are all skill levels there, so don't feel like you need to already have a good grasp on the language before joining. Uh, I did this for a couple years and actually made a few friends that I now do video chats with uh, every weekend. The only downside I would say 
is because you'll be meeting so many new people, you'll find your conversations pretty much only cover self-introductions and basic information. The next resource I've used quite a lot that I also mentioned on my Instagram is an app called Wanikani. It's an app that uses spaced repetition and mnemonics to help you learn kanji. There are 60 levels, and the first few levels are free, so you can kind of get your feet wet and figure out if it's something you want to continue. Then after that, you can either sign up for monthly, yearly, or lifetime subscriptions. I'm pretty sure every winter they have like a big discount on the lifetime subscription, and that's why I ended up going for. And if you're really gung-ho, you can probably finish it in two to three years, uh, but I've gone more slowly and taken a few breaks along the way. So a little after five years, I'm on level 42 right now. Um, I also like to write the kanji as I learn them because the process of actually writing the kanji just helps me to remember them. Now, recently, I've started to shift my focus a little bit. Whereas before my studies were more textbook and academic based, I've realized that that's really not the way that I learn best. Um, I do much better when I actually find what I'm reading uh, interesting or entertaining. So I've been reading a lot more manga and books that interest me. Now, depending on what kind of manga or books you like, you might not exactly be learning anything that you would want to use in your daily life, but I think the exposure to Japanese is definitely worth it. Uh, case in point, I've started reading the Harry Potter series in Japanese that I bought um, about 10 years ago. While I don't foresee myself using the words Maho Tsukai or Yashiki Shimobe Yosei, which are uh, magic user and hell self respectively on a daily basis, uh, I have found it an invaluable resource for learning Japanese onomatopoeia. Now on a less entertaining note, I've also started reading news articles, which is much less enjoyable for me than manga, but it's a good way for me to keep up with current events while improving my Japanese. Personally, I've been reading the Asahi newspaper uh, online articles. Now moving away from reading and into listening, Whenever I'm at home or going to or from work, I like to be listening to something in Japanese, whether it's audiobooks, music, podcasts, um, or even just having a TV show or a movie playing in the background. There is something called the AJAT method, which stands for All Japanese All the Time, um, which was started in like 2004, I believe, which pretty much advocates spending every free moment listening to or looking at Japanese. Now, I haven't gone to quite that extreme, but I do think that being exposed to Japanese as often as possible is really beneficial, even if you don't understand half of what's being said. Uh, right now, my focus is getting better at casual Japanese, so I've been watching Terrace House, which is a really popular Japanese reality show. Now, normally you would never catch me watching a show like this, but hey, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Um, I also use an app called Satori Reader, which offers a ton of stories, uh, Japanese lessons and conversations that you can read, listen to, and interact with. And by interact with, I mean you can click on words and phrases to find their meanings, uh, save them as flashcards to a few later, and actually ask questions directly to the creators. And I found that they have a pretty active forums and a comment section as well. Now, because you're able to listen to audio of the stories while also reading it, it's a great way to practice shadowing, which is where you read along with the story so you can practice your pronunciation. So we've gone over reading, listening, and speaking, which leaves us with writing. And honestly, this is what I practice the least. And actually, the only practice I get is when I'm writing new or unfamiliar kanji when I'm doing wanikani. Unfortunately, with the rise of computers and cell phones, it's easy to just start writing a word in hiragana and just choose a word you're looking for from a drop-down menu. Now, if you're the kind of person who really benefits from writing out flashcards and memorizing words that way, then you'll definitely get some good writing practice in doing that. I've also heard of people who like writing diary or journal entries in Japanese, so that's another avenue you could pursue. So I hope I've provided some useful resources for those looking to up their Japanese game. And if you have any other resources you'd like to recommend uh, that have worked for you, 
then please let me know in the comments. And of course, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.